August 4th, 1914, England declared war on Germany after the Germans had violated the Treaty of London by invading Belgium. It was an event that would change Portslade lives forever. To join the army to fight in the war was at first voluntary, but by the end of 1915, losses of men in the trenches were mounting ever higher. In 1916, the Military Service Act introduced compulsory military service. All men between the ages of 18 and 40 were now required to fight for king and country. This meant that 1,100 Portslade men had now signed up ready to fight and, if necessary, die for their country. Portslade became home to a large army base during World War I. In 1916, Windlesham House School, which was based at the top of the west side of the old village High Street, was transformed into an army cookery school. 38 accommodation huts were erected in the grounds as more than 14,000 men were given the skills they needed to become an army cook. Cooks were trained to make meals out of the bare minimum ingredients that would nourish a company of men only yards from the front line. Meals on the Western Front were nutritious and plentiful as possible, thanks to those cooks who trained at Port Slade. You should now be at the gate of the War Memorial. Rest a moment as I tell you about Port Slade and the Second World War. The Second World War over Port Slade may not have had the devastation of the Blitz on London, but to the residents of Port Slade, it was equally stressful. Given the frontline position of Port Slade on the coast, the threat of invasion had a greater impact on its residents than in many other areas. Especially scary were the daylight tip and run attacks, when enemy aircraft would fly in low, dropping bombs and machine gunning people in the streets. The beaches were no-go areas. Barbed wire defences stood between the sea and the promenade, and heavy artillery lined our seafronts. Port Slade saw plenty of wartime action, with the gasworks at the harbour basin frequently targeted by enemy bombing raids. Coal stores were wrecked, but there was no loss of life and production was able to continue. The village brewery's impressive height made it the perfect spot to sight an anti-aircraft gun and air raid siren. This building was certainly a hub of wartime activity, as local women helped manufacture shells and bullets where once award-winning beer had been brewed. East Hill House was also used for the wartime effort, housing local police officers. At this time, Port Slade was base camp to troops from the Canadian Army and the Australian Air Force. The Port Slade Home Guard was also prepared for invasion. They had been trained in unarmed combat and booby trap techniques. In the event of a breach of our coastline, it would be their job to ambush and delay the invading forces. The local church of St Nicholas played a role in the war. The vicar would leave its door open for anyone needing shelter during an air raid. Wartime romances meant it was also the venue for several marriages between Port Slade women and overseas soldiers. On Remembrance Sunday, a service is held at the East Hill Park War Memorial to remember Port Slade heroes who died serving our country. It contains 243 names from World War I and 46 from World War II. If you wish to spend a moment of reflection within the War Memorial, press pause now. <laughs>